Welcome to another CBA coaching session for the Level 3 Grill. This session follows along from the volume and area calculations from the leaf scroll assembly to the upset corner. Let's do a little review of forming the upset corners. I'm calling them up I'm trying to avoid calling them upset square corners as I don't take the corners to 90 degrees. If you look at the drawing, they are slightly open of 90 degrees. First thing for me is don't allow the center of your hammer to come past the inside edge of the opposite bar or you run the risk of following the corner around and getting a very thin corner. We'll look at that in a moment. Two, um, let's um, look at the scrolling fork and you can see that when it's applied I want to measure its height and then I want to make sure that I keep the center punch mark further than that away from the edge of the vise. I don't want to interfere with the side of the vise during bending. Um, and then for me, light rapid blows. I like to use a lighter hammer for this type of work. Tell me I make a chalk mark on the vise sufficiently away from the center punch mark so that it won't be involved in the heat of the corner and so it will be visible and that aids me when I go to the vise I can just match up the chalk marks and then um, I'm ready to go. The bottom left photo shows me far enough away from the side of the vise that I won't hit the vise with the scrolling fork when bending the corner and that's what we looked at in the other slide. And I like to keep the fork upside down as it helps me keep the bend level. I tend to find if I work from the top I usually end up pushing the material down towards the floor. Don't overbend the corner. The last thing we do with any upset corner is close it to the desired angle. We shape the corner and then we bring it to the desired angle. The top left photo shows the bend complete with the center punch mark still showing. Hold the open end of the stock with the pair of your tongs and then match your hammer face to the bar angle. Start from a flat portion of the bar, which could be well away from the corner, and bring the shadow line of the hammer marks down to just about level with the center punch mark. Don't go past the center punch mark as it's hard to recover, and you can see that by the uh, far right photograph. The top left shows me with an incorrect hammer angle. Yes, I'm keeping the end of the bar open with my tongs, but the toe of my hammer is taking the material past 90 degrees, included angle. And this is going to create a crack later on. The center photo shows me going too far when extending the flat side, and we just talked about that. And then the last photograph shows me following the hammer around the center line of my hammer is going past the inside edge of the other bar and I'm thinning the corner. The top left photo shows the center punch mark. To work on the other side of the corner I need to turn the bar around in the vise but that will put the center punch mark down I won't be able to see it. But what I do have is the end, of, this is a shadow mark basically, of the end of the flat that I created earlier, as shown by the arrows here. I get close to matching the flats and then I turn the bar over again so that I can see the center punch mark. And then I close the corner up a little further and I continue working this way until the corner is formed. Before I get to the point of fully forming the corner, I want to claim some of that growth in width that is formed by the upsetting action. I generally do this at the top of the heat so that I can fully penetrate the bar at the corner as I don't want any lipping or cupping to occur at the corner material. And this looks better. This is my corner. It's open of 90 degrees. The center line of my hammer has not progressed past the inside edge of the opposite bar and I haven't gone too far in extending the flat to the bar. Um, the only thing I think I need to do with this corner perhaps is claim some of that increase in width. Now I've shown working at the vise. You can, and I often do, complete the upset at the anvil. I just feel that I have better control when I work at the vise. And you have to think of inertia in this stage. What's happening to the rest of the bar? This is a, quite a long bar. Working in the vise, you've, you've got that bar captured. 
and so you're not uh, dealing with so much of the force of inertia. Here is my result from working on the face of the anvil and now I'm going to move into the second corner. corner. Again I've got the chalk marks on the bar so I can just align the chalk marks and then go to work. I'm not hunting for that center punch mark and that bright heat and I'm just going to make my bend. Again we bend away from me so when I work with the hammer I'm bringing, because of the cycling action of the hammer, I'm bringing the material into the corner. So you can see I've made my bend, it's open of 90 degrees and I'm extending that flat down to just about level with the center punch mark. Problem now is due to the short length of the other side of the corner, that short leg between both corners, I have to finish the other side of this particular corner at the anvil. Because I've kept the included angle of the first corner open of 90 degrees, the stock can open out as I work on this second corner. To help prevent that, I work along the anvil and then I have a bottom tool, in this case an anvil block, in the hardy hole acting as a stop. I usually stay at the anvil one to get to this stage because I don't want to move between the two and I work up both sides of the corner. Just remember that working from the top side as in this photograph is a really strong move. So it takes one or two blows like from the top and then you're going to match that with half a dozen blows coming from the front. And here's me working from the front. So working from the front is much weaker as you're hammering against your arm. Keep your eye on the center punch mark as you work up this second corner. Here's my result, I'm ready to head into the welding of the leaf scroll assembly. Typically I may draw down a little bit of the bar on the leaf scroll side, um, just to save me having to do that when the leaf is welded on. I leave enough material at the end so that I can get my scarf in there. I'm not having to do an upset, the bar is already acting as an upset. Um, so this is me finishing this coaching session and now we're going to move into the next coaching session which is welding on a leaf scroll assembly.